As we come to acknowledge um, the traditional owners, you might like in the script for given, obviously the Gadigal people, and that's the land on which um, Penny and I are gathered, but um, you might like to acknowledge um, yourself as we come to that point. And I will use the Gadigal people um, because we are recognizing the Pitt Street base, but um, you might like to acknowledge in your own homes, the land on which we gather. Budgeri Gamarua. Welcome, everyone. We especially extend a warm welcome to anyone who maybe hasn't been to church lately, but have found um, this, Zoom, this Zoom way to, to connect. And if there is anyone who's joining us, um, hasn't been in contact with the community, um, please do let us know when we come to the community time. So as we gather, we acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, land that was taken without their consent, treaty or compensation. The Spirit of God has long, long dwelled, dwelled with the first peoples of this ancient land. We, we honour the, the Gadigal, Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay our respects to their elders as we gather to worship God. Each Sunday we acknowledge the children and young people who are part of our community and we're lighting a candle here for them and for all children and young people. So let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks to you that we're all part of the rhythm of life. We are born. We live in relationships. We make choices. We die. We suffer the loss of those we love. As we celebrate this day of journey, we celebrate that we are community. With those here, with the whole inhabited earth, with those living and those who have gone before us. We gather in this place, our sacred places, to celebrate life in all its seasons. We come into a time of worship. Where we tell the stories of our faith. We connect with each other and with the sacred among us. Remembering the past, honouring the present, anticipating the future. So let us pray. And as we do so, we remember the conflicting emotions and feelings we have at this time. We remember all those who are struggling for health, for those who are providing security at this time in our city and beyond. And we remember all the brokenness and struggles of our world. We open to the spirit of Sophia, sacred wisdom. She who pervades all living things with radiance, intelligence, beauty, and kindness. Gather us in, Sophia. Prepare a feast for our whole human family and for all creation. That we may know we are one and that you fill every living thing with your grace. Our foolishness has led us astray. As we choose to eat the bread that does not satisfy and drink from the cup that entraps us in our isolation. Breathe upon us your powerful spirit. And renew us that we may be your people. We give thanks for the community in which our God is found and known, and we pray for the gift of the Spirit to renew us.
Remembering Jesus, wherever we are, we pray together. God, you are life for us. Holy be your name. Your new day come. Your will be done on earth as in your vision. Give us this day our bread for the morrow and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Strengthen us in the time of test and deliver us from evil for the power and the splendor and the fulfillment are yours now and forever. Amen. Hear the words of assurance. In God we live and move and have our being. In the sacred source of life, we are forgiven and our lives are made new. Amen. 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 May the peace of God be with you all. And also with you. So feel free to sing along while you're on mute. If, and I've got some percussion here. It's the only thing I could find. It's a pencil box. <laughs> and dance, if you feel. <laughs> oh, you could do that. <laughs> yeah, you could. Halle, 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 Out of the depths I cry to you, O God. God, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you, O God, should mark iniquities, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for God. My soul waits, and in God's word I hope. My soul waits for God more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O oh, Israel, hope in God, for with God there is steadfast love, and with God is great power to redeem. For the steadfast love of God, we, we give, give thanks. thanks. Listen for words of faith in the Gospel of Mark. When Jesus had crossed again to the other shore in the boat, a large crowd gathered and he stayed by the lakeside. Then one of the synagogue officials, Jairus by name, came up and seeing Jesus, fell down and pleaded earnestly saying, my little daughter is desperately sick. Come and lay your hands on her to make her better and save her life. Jesus went with him and a large crowd followed, pressing from all sides. Now there was a woman who had suffered from hemorrhages for 12 years. After long and painful treatment from various doctors, she had spent all she had without getting better. In fact, she was getting worse. She had heard about Jesus and she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. If I can touch even the hem, she had told herself, I will be well again. Immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Immediately aware that healing power had gone out from him, Jesus turned to the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? The disciples said, you see how the crowd is pressing you and yet you say, who touched me? But Jesus continued to look around to see who had done it. Then the woman came forward, frightened and trembling, because she knew what had happened to her, and she fell at Jesus' feet and told him the whole truth. My daughter, Jesus said, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be free of your affliction. While Jesus was still speaking, some people arrived from the house of the synagogue official to say, 
your daughter is dead. Why put the teacher to any further trouble? But Jesus overheard the remark and said to the official, don't be afraid, just believe. Jesus allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and James's brother, John. They came to the official's house and Jesus noticed all the commotion with people weeping and wailing unrestrainedly. Jesus went in and said to them, why all this commotion and crying? The child is not dead, but asleep. At this time, they began to ridicule him and he told everyone to leave. Jesus took the child's mother and father and his own companions and entered the room where the child lay. Taking her hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. Immediately the girl, who was 12 years old, got up and began to walk about. At this, they were overcome with astonishment. Jesus gave the family strict orders not to let anyone know about it and told them to give the little girl something to eat. For the word that was in the beginning, for the word that invites and inspires, for the word embodied in us. We give thanks. We give thanks. Please feel free to sing with me on the hymn, Come As You Are. Come as you are, that's how I want you. Come as you are, feel quite at home. Close to my heart, loved and forgiven. Come as you are, stand alone. Come as you are, that's how I love you. Come as you are, trust me again. Nothing can change the love that I pay you. All will be well, just come as you are. Amen. Well, of course, we should have been listening to Joe talking about baptism today. Uh, but life in Sydney has been temporarily interrupted. So I guess that's going to have to wait. So instead, we have a chance to look at this wonderful story of interruption and of crossing over from Mark chapter five. And I foolishly said, well, this is my absolutely favorite gospel reading. Um, so Joe said, well, maybe you'd like to chat about that then uh, for a little while. So this is really more a conversation starter uh, than it is a reflection. And maybe over our um, Zoom coffee time, uh, we might be able to chat together some more. But one of the reasons that I absolutely love this story is that it is so cleverly constructed. It's really two stories that mirror each other, uh, one within e another, um, kind of like two babushka dolls. And in different ways, uh, these two stories are about boundaries, about edges, about transition zones, crossing over zones, um, liminal spaces, if you like. And those are always the spaces where God uh, is most active, I think, the places where God can reach us and has most space to work. Um, and so I think that we see that in the very first verse uh, that we heard, um, when Jesus had crossed over again to the other side in the boat. And here's a little bit of homework. Uh, we're all at home reflecting for a couple of weeks. Um, so go to Mark's gospel and count the number of times in Mark's gospel that Jesus crosses over the Sea of Galilee. Uh, and I think you'll be surprised how many there are. It reminds me um, of Elizabeth Gilbert's famous uh, book that was turned into a film, Eat, Pray, Love, um, in which the central character develops a real love for that Italian word, and I, I can't say it well, but attraversiamo. Uh, attraversiamo means to cross over, let us cross over. Uh, and I think attraversiamo is in some way uh, Jesus's motto. 
uh, and quite a good motto for others too. Um, but I'm a bit ahead of myself because on this occasion, Jesus crosses over from Gentile territory uh, where he's healed the so-called Gerizim demoniac back into a, a Jewish area. Uh, and that in itself is a risky choice, though at this stage in Mark's account, uh, he's facing more of a fan mob uh, than he is a lynch mob. And he crosses back over. And when he's crossed over, Jairus, uh, one of the synagogue officials, the leader of the synagogue, comes and he falls at his feet, begging for the life of his daughter. Now, I don't know if we quite get that this is a very big deal. Uh, Jairus was important, kind of like, I don't know, the mayor of the city of Sydney or something, uh, an honored person. And he crosses over from that powerful place and demeans himself at the dirty feet of a ragged itinerant preacher, a highly dodgy character. He moves himself, as it were, from the center to the edge. Why? Because his daughter, uh, apparently uh, a 12 year old daughter, uh, is on the border. She's on the border there of childhood and womanhood, but she's also in the borderland between life and death. So I wonder, as we're thinking about this, are you noticing the borders and the edges? Because there's more of those to come. So Jesus goes with Jairus. Of course he does. Um, if a, a senior leader needs you, um, you drop everything and go. Isn't that right? Especially if it's a life and death situation. But then there's an interruption. The crowd is pressing close. No social distancing here. No boundary. And all of a sudden, Jesus stops. And he starts talking about someone having touched him and looking all around the crowd. Now, can you imagine that? No wonder the disciples are so confused. The leader's daughter is dying and Jesus is worried because someone's bumped into him in the crowd. But of course, this was no accidental bump. The touch was deliberate. Across all the borders of exclusion and isolation and gender, this woman who's been hemorrhaging for 12 years reaches out to touch another edge, the hem of Jesus' garment. And that was enough. Now her touch was forbidden on so many levels. Because of her bleeding, the woman would have been excluded from religious ceremony, from society, from every aspect of daily life. And she's a woman reaching out to touch a man. She has been excluded for 12 years. Uh, in fact, for every year of Jairus's daughter's life. She's been stuck uh, probably on the edge of menopause, just as now Jairus' daughter is stuck on the edge of puberty. But she dares to cross over, to be out in public, to touch a man, or at least his clothing, to make a bid for her life. And Jesus asks for more, because by stopping, by acknowledging what has happened, he invites her to come across the border from the edge to the very center, to come and to speak her whole truth. But while all this is going on, while in a sense Jesus has been wasting time, Jairus' daughter dies and word comes from the household not to trouble Jesus further. And just watch the movement here. Jesus brought the woman from the edge to the center, right into the thick of the crowd. But when it comes to the little girl, he allows no one to accompany him. 
except the close disciples and the child's parents. And just as the excluded person needed to be brought from the edge to the center to find wholeness, so the child has to be taken to the edge. Uh, the, big, the child of the big shop parent has to be taken away to the quiet edge away from the others. There to be taken by the hand and to receive the simplest of words in Aramaic, Talitha Kum. Little girl, get up. Uh, and just as a little aside, I have to say, um, I love those two words, uh, along with the one other word that we have in Aramaic in the gospel spoken to uh, the deaf man, Ettatha, uh, because perhaps they are the only words in scripture that we can reasonably assume that Jesus spoke in his first language. Uh, and so to pray with those words, talatakum, uh, or to pray with ephtatha uh, as a little mantra, that has special resonance for me. That's an aside. Taking the child by the hand was, of course, forbidden, because to touch the dead um, made Jesus ritually unclean. And yet he does it. He crosses over that border to bring her back, to invite her to cross the thresholds back into life and back towards womanhood. So we have here two women, two stories of crossing over and restoration, mirror stories that take us from the edge to the center and back again. So I'd say don't worry too much about the miraculous. Just notice the edges, the borderlands, the crossings, the risks that are part of every human story of identity and transformation. Because this story is, of course, also our story. This is who we are. And just as the woman and the girl in these nested stories are restored to their true and emerging identities. So this story invites us to live our identity, to risk the crossings, to inhabit the borders where wholeness happens. And of course it happens not just at the individual level. Uh, and I thought about Pitt Street uh, as a borderland community. And I don't just mean that we come from lots of different LGAs. I think Pitt Street could have Atraversiamo as our motto, because we're a community that crosses borders of geography and religious belief and ableism and gender and sexuality and race and all the rest. And we do that on a daily basis. So have a little think about the borders that you have crossed in life, about the borderlands that you've chosen and the borderlands that you've been forced to inhabit and about the healings that have unexpectedly been found there. And let's chat about that uh, and about Pitt Street's calling uh, to be a community of border crossers. Uh, and let's have a think about it over morning tea and coffee uh, in a little while. But for now, um, let's cross back over uh, to our liturgy as we move to our affirmation of faith. In the name of Christ, the border crosser. Amen. In our liturgy today, I'd included an affirmation of faith because um, we were going to have a baptism and I left it in when I revised it for today with the readings for today rather than baptism or readings. Um, and we, we had an affirmation of faith in the baptism because it's a reminder that when someone is baptized, they um, cross over, as it were, into the, the whole family of of God, um, not that they weren't part of the family of God, but we claim that in baptism. Um, and to affirm that when we're baptized, not just baptized into Pitt Street or the Uniting Church, but into the worldwide church. So I've left it in because I, I think as we're somewhat cut off, a lot of us at the moment, it's it's a reminder that we we remain in connection with one another and with people throughout the world. And I think it's rather lovely that Uniting Church has included in its stock of um, authorized, as it were, recommended liturgies, um, uh, 
something from the United Church of Canada. So this particularly connects us with the Canadian church, but also with others throughout the world. So I invite you to either to read this quietly at home with me and Penny, or to, to affirm it together. So in unity with the wider church, I invite you to affirm our faith together. We, we are, are not, not alone. alone. We, we live in God's, God's world. world. We, we believe, believe in God, God who, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You swept through the desert, you stung with the sand, and you goaded your people with the Lord and the land. And when they were blinded with their idols and lies, then you spoke through their prophets to open their eyes. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes from the bondage of sorrow, the captive stream dreams, the women see visions, a men clear their eyes with bold new decisions. Your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind. Wind on the sea. Let us pray. Compassionate God, we rejoice in your call to share in expressing your love. May, May all be valued and loved. May, May justice, justice reign and, and peace abound. May, May all be made whole and, and find peace and, and harmony. harmony. We give thanks for all who are called into the communion of your spirit. For Christians here and throughout the world, remembering especially those who are persecuted, may we be renewed in faith. May we be strengthened in hope. May, may we, we be, be united, united in, in love. love. We give thanks for the transformative power of your love and the role we have in co-creation. Grant, Grant us hearts, hearts that, that are open to your call, that, that we, we may join in your dreaming, dreaming enacting a world reborn.
in our circle of prayer today. We remember especially all the peoples of the world oppressed by war, civil unrest, poverty and environmental challenge. We remember those in our city and the wider world affected by COVID-19 and those who care for them. We remember those working for health, sustainability and hope in difficult circumstances. And we also remember all that lies particularly heavy on our own hearts and minds. Holy Spirit, in us and with us, Enable us to be creators of justice and joy. Empower us to be a community where people find hope and new life. Amen. The grace and kindness we are offered transforms us. So we give in response to the gifts we have received. In a moment of silence, we remember all that we give and all that we are called to give. And we give thanks for all that is offered in our community to God in so many different ways, including through the work of our church. We pray together, loving, loving God, God, we bring, bring our, our gifts back, back to you, the source, source of life. life. Help, Help us to find meaning in life, purpose and belonging. Help, Help us to find pleasure in receiving from life and satisfaction in enriching life and caring for earth. Amen. Please feel free to join in as I sing um, the summons. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my love name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk a hostile stare? Should your life at rest or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoner free and never be the same? Will you keep the lamp I clean and do such as is unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and 
my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summer echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. The spirit who hovered over the face of the waters at creation, at your birth and in baptism, grants you the gift of the freedom of Christ. In the name of God who created you, who formed you, and who loves you. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.